Hello everybody, so it's a really nice cold and rainy day here in April in Virginia and I want to do one final video on my timber frame carport project. I figured, hey, what the heck, we might as well come outside and listen to the pleasant sound of rain on the roof. Uh, and, and the reason it's pleasant is because it's not getting on me. The roof is working. That's, that's good news. Um, what I wanted to do to, to wrap things up, though, is to talk about costs. And so what I did last night was uh, go through some of my total costs for the project. One, one of the big costs I want to talk about is the cost savings on this project uh, from not having to purchase lumber. And that kind of goes into, you know, having the benefit of a sawmill. And, uh, and so that was like the first thing I wanted to calculate here. Um, <clears throat> and, and, and getting a sawmill was, uh, you know, the, that was one of the reasons that I got the sawmill uh, at the end of last year was I knew I had some projects coming up. Lumber pricing was, you know, getting crazy. It's gotten worse since then. Um, and so, you know, I was, I was waiting until I got to the end to be able to, to run through these numbers. So what I did was, um, last night I sat down and I went through mentally in my head, uh, all the types and sizes of lumber I needed for this project. And then I got online on uh, a website for Lowe's, one of our local building suppliers in this area and priced everything out. And uh, if I had to purchase lumber for this project, it would have cost just a little bit over $2,000. Uh, I deducted $128 from that, which is what I actually paid for the pressure-treated uh, posts that I used for the bottoms of my main posts. And so those are four-foot sections that I purchased, and those are mated to uh, my rough sawn 12 foot posts to make uh, basically a 16 foot post. So over here, I, I priced out what it would have cost for treated six by six, 16 footers, eight of them. That alone would have been $704, which is ridiculous. Um, doing it the way I did, you know, the top 12 feet of the post were free. I paid $128 to, uh, make the bottoms of the posts treated for ground contact. And so really the net cost savings is $1,921. Uh, that's basically the, the value I got from having a sawmill and be, being able to process and, and make all of my own lumber. Now I happen to think my lumber is uh, higher quality on average than what I could get in the store. But you know, even if you consider everything equal, uh, I saved $1,921 by sawing my own lumber uh, uh, for this project. And so that's, uh, that's a pretty big chunk of money um, when you consider the, this is not a complicated building. I mean, um, that's a big chunk of money to save on what's really just a carport. Uh, this one, uh, let's see, I think this is framed out to be 13 by 22 on the ground and then uh, two foot overhangs all around uh, gives me really like about a 17 by 26 uh, uh, dry area um, so not having to spend 1921 dollars on lumber that's that's a that's a really big deal and so that's a that's a good number to see and and keep in mind my sawmill costs less than four thousand dollars i think um, with the track extension and shipping and a pack of blades um, and then the prep I did for the the base uh, I was I think I was somewhere around thirty seven hundred dollars altogether and so um, you know I've I've made up pretty much half of that cost a little bit more than half of that cost just on this first uh, project um, and some of you know I, I built a shed to go around the sawmill and I sawed all the lumber for that, but I'm not counting that because that's kind of related to the mill and, you know, kind of cancels itself out. 
Now, the other thing I did last night was go through my costs for other materials on this project. I spent $352 on hardware. That's um, sorted bolts, you know, for connecting beams to posts. Uh, and then a whole bunch of different types of uh, timber screws for all around the, the structure. Um, I had, I already had tons of nails and, and nails and staples for, for my nail gun, so I didn't count any uh, cost on that. Um, I spent $898 on the metal roof, and we'll come back to that in a second. I spent $162 on concrete mix for basically uh, pouring footings down at each post hole and then uh, I backfilled the posts with dry mix afterwards. So that was $162 worth of concrete mix. Um, I spent $604 on gravel and uh, I'm actually probably going to spend a little bit more to, to smooth out the grading because it's, it's packed down as I've been driving around here with the tractor some more. Um, I don't know, you might, may or may not want to include gravel cost in, in your building. You certainly would include the cost if you poured a concrete bat, pad uh, or you know, did some other type of permanent base or floor. So I figured it was fair to include the cost of the gravel in here. And um, that was mainly loads of uh, 57 gravel down low and then a crusher run on top to smooth things out. And I'll probably bring in another I don't know, ton or two, a crusher run, and just smooth out uh, uh, everything one last time before I consider that done. Um, so when I add all that other stuff together, I come up with a total cost of $2,144. If I had to pay for lumber, that would have been $4,065. So again, that gives you an idea. Um, you know, the relative savings of not having to buy lumber, be, you know, having a sawmill, being able to make your own lumber for this type of structure. And this is, let's say a generic open pole barn, you know, you're basically saving half um, by not having to purchase lumber at, at today's prices. So, so that's a big deal. That's a good reason to have a sawmill and, and some trees you can saw up. Now, the last thing I want to talk about was the roof. So again, back here, I spent $898 for the metal roof, and uh, these were 29 gauge imperial rib panels, uh, painted charcoal gray, and then I got the Denver gable trim for uh, the gable ends. Uh, I didn't do, use any eave trim. I, I kind of like seeing uh, open raptor tails. Uh, and then there was a ridge cap, and so uh, the panels and the trim and the screws and some butyl tape and uh, closure strips for the ridge, all that came up to just shy of $900. Uh, if I had wanted to, I could have used 5V panels for the roof, and that would have got me down in about the $600 range. Uh, but I just happen to like the look of this uh, type of roof better. So keep that number in mind, okay? Let's just say $900 for the metal roof. My original preference for the roof would have been asphalt shingles. Um, because it would, I could have matched my house. Um, I've put on so many shingle roofs over the years that I can knock it out with my eyes closed. It's easier to work on, easier to walk on. Uh, I, I just happen to like asphalt roofs. And normally, an asphalt roof is considerably cheaper than a metal roof. But because of the high price of lumber right now, just the OSB sheets alone for that asphalt roof would have cost $600. I think we're up to about $40 a sheet now for uh, 7 16 OSB, which is what I would use on this type of roof. And it would have cost $600 just for that in this project. And then if you figure out the cost of roofing felt, shingles, some drip edge, that asphalt roof would have cost me $1,235. Um, and again, come back over here. I only spent 900 on what I consider to be a much better, longer lasting metal roof. And we've gotten to the point with lumber prices being so high and so just out of touch with the reality that uh, it's now about 25% cheaper
per square foot to put on a metal roof. And that's, that's ridiculous, but uh, that's just the way things are right now. So I think that's it for going through the numbers. Um, I appreciate everybody watching along as I went through this project. Uh, this was a really fun project. I kind of consider this to be an optional project. I didn't really need to do this. I mainly wanted some place to park my truck uh, to get it out of the weather and keep it keep the pine trees from dropping stuff on it. Um, I'm hoping my boat will fit in here so that in the situations where I need to bring it uh, back on land, say for maintenance or during a storm, uh, it should fit underneath here and give me a nice place to park my boat, which I haven't had ever. And so that's going to be, you know, really nice capability to have. But um, that, that kind of wraps it up for this project. Uh, thanks everyone for watching and be sure to let me know if you have any questions.